Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Edward G. Robinson, Claire Trevor, and Edmund O'Brien in Key Largo. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's recipe for your enjoyment is melodrama. That spine-tingling compound of mystery, murder, and romance, Key Largo. It brings back to this theater a famous star of melodrama on both stage and screen, Mr. Edward G. Robinson. And Key Largo gives Eddie the kind of part he made famous in the days of Little Caesar. Co-starring with him are Claire Trevor, who repeats the brilliant performance which won her an Academy Award in the picture, and Edmund O'Brien, an actor with a fine talent for action drama. Maxwell Anderson was the author of the stage play, and Warner Brothers repeated the Broadway success with their screen version. You know it takes just the right ingredients and the playwright's know-how to make a successful drama. And it takes just the right ingredients and scientific know-how to make a product like Lux Toilet Soap. But women everywhere recognize its quality. And like nine out of ten screen stars, choose Lux Toilet Soap as their own complexion care. It's curtain time, and here is act one of Key Largo, starring Edward G. Robinson as Johnny Rocco, Claire Trevor as Gay, and Edmund O'Brien as Frank. At the southernmost point of the United States are the Florida Keys, a string of small islands connected by a concrete causeway. Largest of these remote islands is Key Largo. Key Largo has very few visitors this time of year. It's midsummer, and the old wooden hotel is drowsing in the heat. But there are guests in the hotel. A few men and a girl gathered at the little bar just off the lobby. And now, a newcomer walks in. Okay, Jack, what do you want? I just got off the bus. Uh, is the proprietor around, Mr. Temple? He ain't here. The hotel's closed. When will he be back? I don't know. Oh, it's awful hot. How about a beer? Bar's closed. That's right, Jack. Everything's closed in the summertime. Give him a drink. You heard me. Give him a drink. Oh, thank you. Oh, please. Think nothing of it. Wake up, Toots. The buzzer. I hear it. Mr. Brown wants his drink. Oh, his drink, he does. Oh, put plenty of ice, plenty of ice. Uh, listen, I I'll take it up to him. When he wants you, he'll send for you. I know he will. I know that. Well... Turn on the radio. It's almost time for the races. You just wait and see that first race. This uh, 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 fancy freak, that's the one. He'll just walk away with it. Yeah, yeah, sure. You know why? They've been holding him back his last two. Today he wins. Hey, uh, fella, what do you think, hmm? Hmm? You play the ponies? Me? No. Why not? Well, I haven't got the money. This is what I want to tell you. I play the long shots because, you see... Well, betting on the favorite, what, what do you win? Now, for instance, take, the, take this fancy free. You know the odds? 20 to 1. A real long shot. Say, what's her name? McLeod, Frank McLeod. Oh, I'm Miss Dawn. Miss Gay Dawn. Okay, Miss Dawn, he wants you upstairs. Oh, oh, he wants me. I better, uh, I better uh, excuse me, please. Look, mister, if you're thinking of putting up here, the hotel's closed. Well, I don't plan to stay here. I just want to see Mr. Temple. Oh, why'd you say so? He's outside, down at the dock. Yeah, by the boathouse. Thanks. I'll go see him, then. That's right, brother. I'm Mr. Temple. My name's McLeod, Frank McLeod. McLeod? Frank? Major McLeod? Nora! Nora, come here! When would you get here? A few minutes ago. I'm on my way to Key West. Nora, look who's here. This is Major Frank McLeod. And this is Nora. Uh, this is George's wife. 
Your husband and I were in the same outfit overseas. <laughs> As if she didn't know. <laughs> I wrote you a letter, Major, but it came back. Well, I haven't been staying put very long. Ever been down here before? No, sir. Uh, she cools off some come November. Right livable then for about three months. How long are you going to be with us? Oh, for an hour or so till the next bus. An hour? Why, you you could spare us more time than that, surely. Well, Overnight, at least, so you will. He can have George's room, Nora. Yes, Dad, of course. Oh, it looks as if we have more company. Hi. Oh, uh, local police, Major. They're looking for a couple of Indians. Afternoon. Any sign of the Osceola brothers? Uh, sorry, Ben. No sign of them around here. Uh, I want you and Clyde to meet my son's commanding officer. This is Major McCloud. I see you, Major. Hi, Major. If you don't mind, Mr. Temple, we'd like to have a look around. Was I you, I'd save myself the trouble. They'll give themselves up by morning. Well, Clyde, if Mr. Temple says they ain't here, they ain't here. Sorry to bother you, Mr. Temple. Such a fuss over a couple of harmless Indians. Nora's right, Major. They just got a little snootful and started to take Florida back for the Seminoles. <laughs> Well, I sent word for them to come here and give themselves up. Uh, not that I'm supposed to know where they are, you understand. Well, let's get inside and cool off. You mind giving me a hand? Be glad to. George told me how you were sort of crippled up. Yeah, my legs. Tree fell on them eight years ago. Hurricane. Been no good for anything ever since. I'll go on and see about your room, Major. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Mr. Temple. I see the fellow found you okay. Yeah, Major McLeod here, he was my son's commanding officer overseas. Yeah? yeah? They were in the Italian campaign together. My uh, boy George was killed at casino. Yeah? <laughs> What's going on up there? Nothing, Mr. Temple, nothing at all. Nora, what is it? It's Case of one too many, Pop. Miss Dawn drinks too much. You had no right to hit her. If you people can't behave yourselves, you gotta leave. Don't worry about it, Pop. She'll behave. You got the room ready, Nora? Maybe the Major would like to wash up. Yes, it's ready. This way, please. Up the stairs. Thanks. Say, uh, these other guests, how long have they been here? Three days. That's their yacht you saw off the pier. Mr. Brown's yacht. Which one is Mr. Brown? Oh, he's in his room. Rich, I guess, from the way they all jump when he lifts a finger. He's a lady killer, or he thinks he is. Anyway, they'll be leaving soon. Well, here's your room. Major, were you with George when he died? Yes, I was. Did he... did he suffer a lot? No. No, he never knew what hit him. Oh, I was afraid he might. Can I come in? Yeah, sure, come on in. Come down to Dad's office when you're ready, Major. So you're staying the night, huh? I'm Curly Hoff. Uh, I, uh, I hope you're not sore. I mean the way we handle you downstairs. No, I'm not sore about anything. I guess you're wondering what we're doing here, huh? I don't suppose it's any of my business. Uh, we come down from Milwaukee, the four of us, deep sea fishing. More than a year we've been planning this trip. So what happens? The blind shows up. If she isn't drunk and crying, then she's got a hangover and arguing. Now I ask you, can you blame us for not being nice and polite? No, I don't blame uh, you. Uh, you. You're going downstairs. Let's have a little drink. Well, not right now, thanks. Well, come on, Jack. Just to show there's no hard fit. Hey, miss. Was you just talking on the telephone? Yes, the Coast Guard called. Oh. I thought maybe it was for one of us. The storm signals are up. Hurricane's on its way. <laughs> you see what I mean, Mr. Hurricane's yet? Dad's in here, Major, in the office. Sit down, Major. Sit down. The war's over, Mr. Temple. I'm not a Major anymore. Well, I guess you want to know about George. He was a good soldier, Mr. Temple. You can be proud of him. I always was. George was a born hero, I guess. It's a wonder he lasted till casino. But when you believe like George believed, maybe dying isn't very important. Well, he talked a lot about both of you. You'd be surprised how much I know. What's it like where... where George is buried? Sort of pretty and peaceful. Crosses on a slope and high up what's left of a church. You can see a river from where George is. I'd like to pay a visit to that place. Maybe someday we can, Dad. Go to Italy and see where George is buried. Dad, there's a storm warning. I'd better see to the boat. Maybe Frank would like to go with you. Yeah, sure. Tell me something. What brought you down here? Oh, I like the sea, and I thought I'd like to make my living at it. Doing what? 
Doesn't matter. Life on land's getting too complicated for my tastes. What'd you do before the war? Circulation manager for a newspaper. Good job. Didn't you go back to it? Yeah, yeah but I couldn't stick to it. I've done a lot of things since. Anything to make a dollar. Well, this is our boat, the Santana. Not much you can do when it starts to blow like this. Just hope for the best. How's your ground tackle off stern? Oh, plenty heavy. I'd better double up in these bow lines. <laughs> Where'd you learn about boats? Oh, my first sweetheart was a boat. Say, uh, that yacht out there, that's his, huh, Mr. Browns? I think he chartered it. She'd better get away from the reefs. Oh, there's a skipper aboard. He ought to know what to do. Hello, Miss Nora. What? Tom. Hello, and John. Well, come here. Frank, this is Tom and John Osseo. How do you do? We're bad Indians, huh, Miss Nora? Well, we give ourselves up to police. I'm glad, Tom. Dad says it's the best thing. We do whatever he says. He's a good friend. Well, did you come here alone? Oh, no, miss. All Indians on Clawfish Island come. Best thing when hurricane blows. It's all right, Miss Nora. The family stay on hotel porch and not make any bother. Of course it's all right. Where are they all? At Cove, miss. We'll go tell them. I'll tell Dad. He'll telephone the police. Yes, miss. Very good. They'd do anything at all for Dad. As far as they're concerned, he's the United States of America. You're very happy here, aren't you? Very. Never lonely? No, not anymore. Before George, my life hadn't made much sense. I never had much of a home and didn't like what I had. Well, George... George gave me roots. When he went overseas, I came down here to stay with his father, and the roots took hold. Now I... I'm like one of those men. Well, I guess that answers my question. Oh, here it comes. Come on, before we get soaked. <laughs> well, I just talked to the Osceola brothers. We're going to wait out there on the porch. I thought you said the police had come back. Cars down the road, all right, but no sign of Ben or Clyde. I wonder where they went. Where'd those people go, Dad? Up in their rooms? They're all in the bar. Well, this is going to be an experience for them. Real Florida hurricane. I'll get it, Dad. It's okay, miss. I'll take it. But I... I said I'll take it. Hello? No, Mr. Temple's not here now. Of course I'm here. Who is it? Me? I'm a guest at the hotel. No, we haven't seen him. Give me that phone. You heard her. Give her the phone. Take it easy, soldier. Put down that gun. What do you think you're doing here? Shut up. All of you. Okay, Sheriff. If Sawyer shows up, I'll have him call you right back. That was Ben Wade. Yeah, I guess it was. He's looking for his deputy. Then Clyde Sawyer must have come here alone. That's his car down the road. Is it? Well, I'm calling Ben right back. You're not phoning anybody, Pop. Who are you? Pack of thieves? Put that gun away. Come on, toots. Let's take him upstairs and see Mr. Brown. Angel, keep your eyes open. Curly's got him across the hall, boss. The old man, the girl, and the soldier. Well, what happened? Who's on the phone? Yeah, the law, sheriff, looking for the deputy. Well, that means it won't be long, then. Oh, you think this rain would cool things off, but it don't. Gonna have a hurricane, huh? Yeah, that's what they say. I want to talk to you, Mr. Brown. Open that door and come out here. Well, now, what's all this about? Oh, good evening, Mr. Temple. Who's the young man? My name's McLeod. I want some answers, Mr. Brown. You want money? Is this a robbery? Now, look, Pop. Let's be nice and sensible, huh? Now, forget the questions. What you don't know won't hurt you. I'm expecting a friend. He ought to get here in a couple of hours now, and then we'll get out of here. Now, try and put up with us that long, huh? Well, sister, what are we going to eat tonight? Pompano, maybe? Am I to understand we're prisoners? Well, put it this way, Pop. You're going to be my guest for a little while. (laughs) You know, back in Chicago in the old days, we used to pay eight or ten dollars for an order of Pompano. Used to fly it in. And the way they served it. (laughs) Yes, sirree, all done up in the brown paper bag. Oh, uh, got any champagne, miss? No champagne, boss. I looked before. Oh, well, that's too bad. Champagne and pompano. <laughs> they really go together. Hey, boss. The cop's starting to come around. Sawyer. You've got Sawyer in there. Yeah, that's right, Pop. Mr. 
Mr. Temple, call, call Ben Wade. Tell him I need help. I happened to run into him, Pop, about ten minutes ago down on the beach. Well, look at him. He's all beaten up. Why did you hurt that boy? He's a cop, that's why. And who are you? Answer me, who are you? He's Johnny Rocco, Mr. Temple. Yeah, that's right. Johnny Rocco. Please, let me help Mr. Sawyer. He's badly hurt. Okay, go on in. Uh, Curly, let her help him. Rocco. I know that name. Johnny Rocco the gangster. The one and only Rocco. But they threw you out of the country. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. After living in the USA for more than 30 years, they called me an undesirable alien. Me, Johnny Rocco. Like I was a dirty red or something. Well, how can you be here? Well, maybe I'm not, Pop. You know, this ain't real what's happening. You're having the dream. Yeah, wake up, Pop. You're snoring. All right. You shouldn't have been deported. You should have been exterminated. I'll show you. Rocco. Hey, I'll I apologize for Mr. Temple. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Or who to. Sir, Johnny Rocco was a king, an emperor. His rule extended over beer, slot machines, the numbers racket, and a dozen other forbidden enterprises. He's a master of the fix. Whom he couldn't corrupt, he terrified. Whom he couldn't terrify, he murdered. You filth! You city filth! Mr. Temple, please. Welcome back, Mr. Rocco. It was all a mistake. America's sorry for what it did to you. Hey, on the level, boss. Were you that big? Yeah. Yeah, that's me, sure. I was all of those things and more. When Rocco talked, everybody shut up and listened. What Rocco said went. Nobody was as big as Rocco. I'll be back up there one of these days, and then you're really going to see something. Now, what's with you, wise guy? Well, give. You were in the war, huh? Yeah. Get any medals? Couple. Brave, huh? No, not very. Why'd you stick your neck out? No good reason. Frank, what are you saying? I believed some words. Words? What words? Well, it went like this, Mr. Rocco. But we are not making all this sacrifice of human effort and human lives to return to the kind of world we had after the last world war. <laughs> We're fighting to cleanse the world of ancient evils, ancient ills. Well, what's all that about? I remember those words. That makes two of us. We rid ourselves of your kind once and for all, Rocco. You ain't coming back. Who's going to stop me, old man? If I wasn't all crippled up, <laughs> I... You wouldn't be talking this way. Right, Bob? Filth! You filth! <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it, Bob. Go on, get him. Go on, sick him. <laughs> Go on, keep swinging, Bob. Come in, hit me, will you? Oh, you're not quitting, are you? <laughs> My boy George never quit, and I ain't quitting. I, I ain't never... Dad! I'll kill you. I'll kill you! <laughs> Little wildcat, huh? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. Got claws, huh? Want to scratch, huh? Hey, boss. Boss, telephone. Miami wants you on the phone. Okay. You stay here, sister. I'll be back for some more in a few minutes. It's all right, Nora. He won't touch you. Not as long as I'm alive. Ah, you're a real man, Pop. Boss, there's a whole bunch of people out on the porch. Look like Indians. What do they want? They want in the hurricane. Well, keep them out. Where's the blonde? How come she's missed all this? I guess she's still in the room, sleeping it off. Yeah. Hand me the phone. Hello? Yeah, this is Mr. Brown. Oh, hello, Ziggy. How are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's well hearing for you again. Well, how's every little thing? <laughs> he was at the door. What'd you say, Ziggy? Maybe it's the law. Well, show him in. Uh, look, uh, when you when you coming down here? What hurricane? Is that right? Hey, it's the guy from the yacht, boss, the skipper. Well, so what, Ziggy? You're only a couple of hours away. No, no, no. It's got to be tonight. Well, that's more like it. Yeah, see you in a couple of hours. How you doing, skipper? Storm warning. Big blow on way. So what? If this reef not safe, senor, got to make for deep water right away. Well, the boat stays right here. No, too dangerous. Boat bust up on reef. I tell you when to move that boat. I am skipper. I want you to do, you do as I say. Please, senor, I got to move my boat. Angel, give me a rod. See this? Now you try to move that boat and I'll blow your brains out. I will be out of here in a couple of hours. Si, senor. All right, get back to the boat. Angel, that cop's car, drive it off the road. Bring it around back. Sure, sure. Hey, boss, think he's coming, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Just two more hours. Then what, huh? <laughs> then what? Then Johnny Rocco is back in business. <laughs> We 
In a few moments, we'll return with the second act of Key Largo. And now, our Hollywood reporter, Libby Collins, with news about the stars. Isn't it good to have Betty Hutton back on the screen again, Mr. Keeley, after a two-year absence? I should say so. You know, Betty is just the girl to put over a madcap musical like Paramount's Red, Hot, and Blue. Oh, there's no one quite like Betty. She's her own slam-bang self once again. Victor Mature plays her boyfriend in the picture, and I must say they make a wonderful pair. There's also a new twist, Libby, having the villain of the picture played by Frank Lesser, composer of the four song hits in Red, Hot, and Blue. You know, it's his first screen role, and he enjoyed it as much as he did hearing Betty sing his songs. Looks lovelier than ever, doesn't she? Oh, yes, indeed. Of course, you know she's now the mother of a second adorable daughter. Well, that makes three beauties in the family. All Lux girls, I'll bet. Yes, John. You can be sure those little girls will get the right start on complexion care. Betty has used Lux soap for years to protect her lovely complexion. You know, Libby, Lux toilet soap just has to be good when nine out of ten famous stars depend on it for daily beauty care. There couldn't be a finer soap. Women love the softer, smoother look Lux soap facials give their skin. And these facials do make skin lovelier. Tests by skin specialists prove it. In actually three out of four cases, complexions improved in a short time. A Lux Soap facial is so quick and easy. Just smooth the creamy, fragrant lather well in. Rinse. Pat with a soft towel to dry. That's all. But it works. Why not take a tip from Hollywood? Try this fine product of Lever Brothers Company, the gentle complexion soap that screen stars recommend. You'll be delighted with the fresh new beauty Lux Toilet Soap gives your skin. Now, here's our producer, Mr. William Keeley. Act two of Key Largo, starring Edward G. Robinson as Johnny Rocco, Claire Trevor as Gay, and Edmund O'Brien as Frank. It's a few minutes later. On the porch of the modest hotel... A cluster of Indians patiently observe the increasing fury of the hurricane. Inside, the lobby and bar are deserted. Johnny Rocco is going up the stairs. Can you talk, Clyde? Are you feeling better? Well, uh, I guess I'm all right now, Mrs. Temple. What happened? Go ahead, copper. Tell him. I drove back here alone. I was sure those two Indians were around here somewhere. I was near your dock when somebody slugged me. Uh, whose room is this? A very famous man, Johnny Rocco's. Rocco? You heard him, deputy. What did Miami have to say? They're on their way. Well, how are you feeling, copper? <laughs> you gave your left eye to nail me, wouldn't you? Local deputy captured Johnny Rocco. Your picture in all the papers, huh? <laughs> well, listen, Hick. I was too much for any big city police to handle. They tried, but they couldn't. That's right, Mr. Sawyer. It took the United States government to get Johnny Rocco. Yeah, and I'm back again, ain't I? They threw me out, but now I'm back. And before you know it, I'll be pulling the strings again. I'll be electing mayors and governors before you ever get a ten-buck raise. Yeah. How many of those guys in office owe everything to me? I made them. I made them like a... Like a tailor makes a suit of clothes. I take a nobody seat, teach him what to say. I pay for his campaign expenses, dish out a lot of groceries and coal, get my boys to bring the voters out and then count the votes over and over again till they add up right... And he's elected. And what happens? Does he remember when the going gets tough? When the heat's on? Oh, no. All he wanted was to save his own dirty neck. Yeah. Public enemy, he calls me. Me, who gave him his public all wrapped up with a fancy bow on it. Yeah, what am I getting mad about? Tell you, lay out my clothes. What suit, Johnny? My gray on and a white shirt. Nora, huh? <laughs> Your name is Nora, huh? I'm a little wildcat. What are you sore about, honey? Keep away from me. Ah, wait till I'm dressed up. You like style, I can tell. Keep away from me. You know, I knew one like you a long time ago. Scratched, kicked, bit. Even stuck a knife in me once. <laughs> little and kind of skinny she was with a, a real fireball. Her name was Maggie Mahoney. And then, for professional reasons, I had to change her to Gay Dawn. She was sure some knockout in those days. Yeah, just like this one, eh, Curly? Just like this one, huh? Look at him. The great Johnny Rocco, slapped by a girl. Shut up, old man. You hillbillies. 
There's nothing to stop me from wiping you all out. Give her a smack. Get it out of your system. That might be right for you, Curly, but not for Johnny Rock. I need your advice, soldier. I ask for it. No, smacking her isn't enough for such an insult. He'd have to kill her, and he'd have to kill the rest of us because we witnessed it. But he needs your help, so he's going to forget it. Yeah, wise guy, huh? Regular wise guy. Unlock the door! Unlock this door! I want out! It's the blonde, Johnny, sounding off again. I'll let her out. Get out, all of you. I've got to get dressed. I take off my hat to you, soldier. It's a good thing you said what you did. I know, Johnny, he'd have started shooting. Hey, where is everybody? Downstairs? Oh. Hi, everybody. Where's Johnny? In his room. I need a drink. What's everybody doing upstairs? Miss Temple. Hey, what's wrong, honey? You've been crying. Has somebody been mean to you? Oh, him, huh? Did you make her cry? I may be partly responsible. Well, you ought to be ashamed. Come on, downstairs. Downstairs. Come on, let's go to the bar, honey. Hmm? Have a little drink. A little chase the blues away. No, thanks. I think... I think I'll have one. The boss said that you... I don't care what he said. I need a drink. I don't feel well. How many times do I have to tell you? Johnny says no more drinks. This is a free country. If I want a drink, I can have one. I can buy my own, see? Yeah. Well, it's money, isn't it? Take it. Sorry, baby, the boss The said... boss, the boss. Tell the boss he can... Hello, darling. <laughs> Uh, how come it's hotter at night than in the day? When it's raining than when it ain't. Well, wise guy? I don't know. You don't know? I thought you was a wise guy from way back. You got a million dollars? No. How much? Nothing. But you're a wise guy. Johnny, why don't you talk to me? Well, wise guy? You see, Mr. Rocco, I was educated only in impractical things. With you, it's just the opposite. Johnny, I'm afraid of the storm. I... Thunder. Hey, Pop, uh, this is a hurricane, huh? A real thing. It's the beginning. Oh, I'm afraid. Can uh, cars get through during a hurricane? Maybe, maybe not. I think I'll have a, a scotch and soda, please. No, oh, no, no. Oh, please, no. darling. Uh, you, McLeod. Yes, sir. You know, I can see right through you. You're saying to yourself, I'm better than Rocco. He's felt, like the old man says here. Right? Right. You say to yourself... Rock has got a gun, and I have. You figure it's a gun. Well, listen, soldier. Thousands of guys got guns, but there's only one Johnny Rocco. How do you account for it? He knows what he wants, Mr. Sure. Fink. What do you want? Tell him, Rocco. Well, I, uh, I want, uh... He wants more. Don't yeah, I? yeah, that's it, more. I want more. Will you ever get enough? Well, I never have. No, I guess I won't. You. You know what you want? I had hopes once, but I gave them up. Hopes for what? A world in which there's no place for Johnny Rocco. Okay, soldier. Here's your chance. Give me a gun, Curly. Now you take mine, soldier. Go on, take it. That's it. All right, you can make your hopes come true. But you gotta die for it. See what I'm aiming? Right at your belly. Go ahead, shoot. You got a gun now? You gonna use it or not? Kill him, Frank. Kill yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, kill him. Go ahead now. Show him how you're not afraid to die for your hopes. No. One Rocco, more or less, isn't worth dying for. Give it to me. Give me the gun and the same chance. Oh, no, Pop. I'm afraid you'd use it. What's the matter? What's the matter, Nora, honey? You look like you lost somebody near and dear. A live war hero. Well, now I know how you did it. Hey, uh, Curly. Gay. Anybody want a hero? Here's one for sale, cheap. Uh, all right, Rocco. Let you and me play that game. He got the gun. Clyde's got the gun. Kill him, Clyde. Kill him. You can stop me from going out that door, Rocco. But I'll shoot you first. And if your friends shoot me, you'll still get it. Now then, stand away from that door. I said to stand away. The gun wasn't loaded. He didn't have a chance. Murderer. Well, I had to do it, old man, or he would have been out that door and gone. Hey, sure gone now, Johnny. You were right, little lady. That gun wasn't loaded, but the brave deputy didn't know it. But you knew the gun was empty, didn't you, Frank? You could tell by by the weight. No. No, I didn't know. Oh, but you were smart, fella. I always say it's better to be a live coward than a dead hero. Oh, 
Excuse me, I, I guess I was talking too much. You weren't afraid, son. We know that. I was afraid. That's not why I didn't pull the trigger. What do I care about Johnny Rocco, whether he lives or dies? Rocco wants to come back to America, let him. Let him be president. I fight nobody's battles but my own. No, Frank, no. Yeah, say, that's good. Rocco for president. If I believed your way, I'd want to be dead. It's true you are a coward. Hey, Tuts, get rid of the deputy. You and Curly, uh, get rid of him. And as for you, sister, I want something to eat. Our best is none too good for Johnny Rocco. Yeah, well, now you're talking, sister. Only, uh, you go to the kitchen with her, Angel. I ain't ready to die yet, uh, not from cockroach poison. <laughs> He's on the phone, boss. Ziggy, why ain't he here? Why ain't he coming? Oh, he's coming, all right. Give me that phone. Hey, what's the idea, Ziggy? Why ain't you starting yet? Well, we got a hurricane here, too, so what? Now, now look, look, wait a minute. Now. Keep quiet. While you... Look, I make the run from Cuba. I risk my neck, and you won't come out in the rain. Now, I give you two hours to get here. You ain't here by 10, the deal's off. Hello? 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 Well? Oh, has gone dead. Ah, uh, so what? You heard what I had to say. Gay, didn't I say no drinking? Oh, please, honey, just one. There are some people at the door, Mr. Rocco. They, they want to come in. It's them Indians, boss. Getting kind of blowy out there, I guess. Well, I'll send them away. Get rid of them. No, you have no right. So he has no right. I'm going upstairs. You're not going anywhere, honey. Well, Mr. McLeod, ain't you got any conversation left? I've said my piece. Yeah, you sure did, wise guy. Well, let's talk about her, the lady on the bar stool. You know, one thing I can't stand is the dame that's a drunk. What I mean is they tear my stomach. No good to themselves or anybody else. Drunk? I haven't even had one drink. She's got the shakes, see? So she has a drink to get rid of them. That one tastes so good, she has another one. You gave me my first drink, Johnny. Oh, so it's all my fault now. Everybody has their first drink, don't they? But everybody ain't a lush. Oh, if I'd have known you were going to act this way, I wouldn't have come here. You know, eight years since I seen her, Pop. You wouldn't know it was the same day. Oh, gee, honey, you're as mean as can be. Mean as can... Now, what does that remind me of? Don't you remember, Johnny? In a song, she used to sing it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, me to... You know, I gave her a first chance. Took her out of the chorus, made her a singer. Mention that while you're at it. Gee, Johnny, I didn't mean anything. Yeah, she could have had a future. That's right, she had everything. Yeah, voice, looks... Plenty of class. Yeah. Yeah, I was a rage. Gee, honey, I've never... Now, look, uh, look, Gay. Hmm? Why don't you give us your old song? Come on. You mean right now? Yeah, now. I can't. Ah, sure you can. Please, Johnny, don't make me. Now, look, if you were nice, if you sang your song for us, you can have a drink. Well, can I have a drink for No, us? no, the song, then the drink. Without any accompaniment? Now, look, do you want the drink or don't you? Okay, okay. Well? <laughs> you should have seen me then, Miss Temple. <laughs> See, my gowns were gorgeous. Only the best. And yet I hardly wore any makeup. Just some lipstick, that's all. And no lights when I came out. Just a, a baby spot. They, they'd play the intro in the dark, and then the spot would come on, and... And there I'd be. <laughs> well, uh, go ahead. Go ahead now. Sing for the people, honey. Keep oh. quiet, everybody. Go ahead, Gay. Sing. Uh, uh, Moaning low, my sweet man, I love him so. Though he's mean as can be. He's the kind of man, he's the kind of woman like me. Gonna die, my sweet man should pass me by. If I die, <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, the drink, give me the drink, no. Johnny, Johnny. No, no. you promise? Ah, you were lousy. You, you couldn't even finish that number. Here, here's your drink. Thanks, fella. Let him alone, no! Yeah, no. you're right. Let him alone. He ain't worth slapping around. Hey, uh, old man. Uh, the storm. How how bad can it get? How bad? Back in 35, 
800 people washed out to sea. Yeah? Well, how far away was that from here? Oh, a few miles. Oh. Yeah, well... Uh, I want a drink. Fix everybody a drink, Angel. Oh, everybody except her. Frank, I'm sorry about the things I said before. Forget it, Nora. You gave her a drink. He was ready to kill you for that, but that made no difference. You had to help her. Your head said one way, but your whole life said another. The other things, maybe they're true. Maybe it is a rotten world. But a cause isn't lost as long as someone is willing to go on fighting. Only I'm not that someone. You may not want to be, but you can't help yourself. What do you know about me? A lot. From the way you look and talk. From the things George wrote me. Oh, come on, come on, break it up over there, will you? I don't like people whispering. Why is everybody so quiet? Well, go on, talk, why don't you? You, Curly, say something. Uh, uh, uh. What, what do you want me to say, Johnny? Well, anything, anything, just so it's talk. Go on, go well, ahead, well, go ahead. Well, uh, I'll bet you two, three years we get prohibition back. Yeah, go on, well, go on. Th th this time we make it stick. Yeah, yeah. I'll bet you two, three years prohibition comes back. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I bet you. The <laughs> trouble was before, I mean, too many guys wanting to be on top. Yeah. One mob gets to massacre and the other. The paper's playing up big, big, yeah. see? So what happens? So? Look, uh, look, Pop, I don't believe it. 800 guys getting washed out of sea. You're a liar, old man. 200 miles an hour, that wind blew. A tidal wave 12 feet high went right across the keys. Ah, you months liar. Afterwards, bodies were found in the mangrove swamps. You don't like it, do you, Rocco? The storm. Show it your gun, why don't you? If it doesn't stop, shoot it. So the public votes out prohibition, and that's the end of the mobs. Next time it'll be different, though. Yeah. We learned our lesson, all right. Next time the mobs will all get together. I'm asking God Almighty to make a big wave now. Now. Send it crashing down on us. Destroy us all if need be, but punish him. Shut up, Papa. I'm warning you. Shut up! Hear me! Hear me! I'll kill you! Mr. Temple, don't. He will shoot. You don't have to stand in front of me. Let him shoot me. Make a big wave, Lord. Send it against us. Take us all, but destroy him. I guess we both forgot, Mr. Rock. Your gun, it's empty. No, it ain't empty now. I'm loading it. See, wise guy? Johnny, we'll all be killed in this place. The storm is getting worse. It's slowing down. The whole place is blowing down. Outside, Johnny, and take off Destroy him, Lord! Destroy him! We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In a moment, we'll present the third act of Key Largo. I believe our guest tonight, Miss Debbie Reynolds, has established a record. You must be the youngest starlet on the Warner Brothers lot, Debbie. Well, I'm 17, Mr. Keeley, and I was lucky enough to be signed even before I graduated from high school. Mm, wonderful. Had time to catch your breath yet? <laughs> Not quite, Mr. Keeley. There's so much to learn. I never miss a studio showing of a new picture. One that especially impressed me was The Hasty Heart. Ah, yes, a most unusual story starring Ronald Reagan and Patricia Neal. That's right, Mr. Keeley. And in addition, there's Richard Todd, the new British actor. I'm perfectly sure he's going to make a hit over here. And moviegoers will applaud Patricia Neal as an army nurse. You know, she plays her role with great charm and conviction. Isn't she lovely? Ronald Reagan is the American soldier who falls in love with her. Well, now, Debbie, who could blame him? She's mighty easy on the eyes. Oh, yes, a gorgeous blonde. And in her nurse's uniform, she's simply dreamy. What a complexion. She's a lux girl, Mr. Kennedy. Never neglects her daily lux soap facials. Like most screen stars, she knows it's a care she can depend on. A gentle, protecting care that's right for delicate skin. Well, it certainly works for me. It's a real beauty soap. And I'd like to recommend Lux Soap Care to any girl who wants a nicer complexion. Thank you, Miss Debbie Reynolds, for that very sound beauty hint. Nine out of ten screen stars, you know, use Lux Toilet Soap for daily complexion care. Try it for your precious complexion soon. You'll discover that this fine white soap with the delicate fragrance really makes skin lovelier. Here's our producer, Mr. William Keeley. The curtain rises on the third act of Key Largo. Starring Edward G. Robinson as Johnny Rocco, Claire Trevor as Gay, and Edmund O'Brien as Frank. On 
Key Largo, the little hotel still stands. It's weathered another hurricane, and now the storm is passing out to sea. It's nearly 10 o'clock. In the lobby, Johnny Rocco stands before a window, peering out into the night. I don't mind telling you, Pop, that storm had me a little scared there for a while. I'm sorry it's gone. I'm sorry you're still alive. Well, keep praying, Pop. Maybe something will happen. You think Ziggy's going to show up? I sure he'll show up. Oh, we'll get out of here then, won't we, honey? I'm all packed. I'm ready to leave any Well, let's get upstairs, Curly. We'll get the stuff ready for when Ziggy gets here. Oh, Angel, stay there, will you? Watch him. Yes, yeah, sure. You'll be leaving too, Frank? Yes, I guess so. Will we ever see you again? Well, I hope so. Why don't you stay right on here with us? You're most welcome. Go on, tell them, Nora. You tell them. Have you any folks? No. Well, I'd be proud to have you regard us as your family. Maybe that isn't what Frank wants, Dad. Maybe... Hey, boss! Boss! Hey, where is he? Upstairs. What's the matter? Hey, the boat's gone. Not a sign of it. Gone, huh? How you done it? Hm. And Skipper. I told him I'd kill him, but he took the boat anyway, just the same. <laughs> Hey, what's the joke? <laughs> no boat. It, it strikes me funny. Well, there is a boat. All ready for us now to the dock. Pop, we're going to borrow your boat. Who's going to run it for you? Answer me that. That's right, Johnny. We don't know nothing about boats. He's going to run it. The soldier. The wise guy. He knows about boats, don't you? Yeah, son. His first sweetheart was a boat. I heard him tell her. Well, you're taking us to Cuba. Why should I? Because you know it'll happen to you if you don't. Besides, one Rocco, more or less, ain't worth dying for. Ain't that what you said? Hey, boss, it's the law, boss. Sheriff. Okay. One wrong word out of anybody, and he gets it, and he gets it now. Mr. Temple. Mr. Temple. You understand me, old man? All right, sister, let him in. Just a minute, Mr. Wade. Good evening, miss. I'm looking for Clyde Sawyer. He... He's not here. You been here? No. Not tonight. That's funny. Put in a call for me from here about... Seven o'clock. Oh, evening, Temple, folks. Pretty good blow, huh? Yeah, a regular hurricane. How's the road? Impassable. I'm trying to find my deputy. By the way, uh, on the telephone, who answered? Uh, nobody was around, so I answered. I guess Mr. Sawyer must have got stalled along the road. Oh. Seen anything of the Indians, Mr. Temple, those Osceola brothers? No. Chip! Hmm. Get up, you dog! Dog, I guess the storm upset him some. Well, I don't mind saying it had us all a little upset. That's funny. Chef! He's found something out there. I know that bark. Uh, you, uh, you got a flashlight? Let's see what it is. Yeah, yeah, he's found something all right. Let's go. Well, that's some dog he's got, Mr. Temple. He, he found something all right. A dead man. It was him, Temple Clyde. He'd been murdered. Well, uh, I don't like to say anything, Sheriff. Uh, after all, it's not my business, but uh, those uh, those Indians you were talking about, they were here before. The Osceolas? Yeah, they were out there all during the storm. Left only a few minutes ago. I'll get them. I'll get them Indians if it's the last thing I do. No, Ben, no. You lied to me, Temple. Your Indians murdered Clyde Sawyer. Watch yourselves all. You're one people and I shoot. <laughs> You hadn't seen the Osceolas. You lied, didn't you? Ben. They murdered Clyde. The Minions saw they could hide his body, but the storm tore it loose and threw it up right out there, right in front of your door. And that's where the crime belongs, right at your door. Ben, they're, they're, they're shooting just now. Oh, they tried to get away. I killed them both. Killed them. You. What's your name? Killed them? Me? Uh, Howard Brown. Address? Uh, Hotel Central, Milwaukee. Haven't I seen you someplace before? No, no I don't think so. Oh, these other men, uh, they're friends of mine. We're all here from uh, Milwaukee, Sheriff. Deep sea fishing. See that you all stay here. I'll be back in the morning. Yeah, you did a great job, didn't you, hiding that body? Boss, how did I know the storm would... Now, shut up. Ziggy. Yeah, if Ziggy don't come now, where... Ziggy's here, boss. Him and his boys, they're here. What are you talking about? They drove up in the back while the sheriff was out hunting Indians. <laughs> That's Ziggy. <laughs> all right, Pop, uh, you and the soldier boy and the dame inside. Get in your office. Come on, you too, Gay. No, but I honey... said inside. Angel, you stay with him. I don't want no more trouble. All right, bring him in, Curly. Ziggy and his ma. Bring him in. <laughs> well, look.
look at him. A <laughs> Ziggy. Well, 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 well. <laughs> you sure are a sight for sore eyes. Sure great to see you again, Johnny Pal. <laughs> hey, put on a little weight, huh? Uh, now, look who's talking. <laughs> hey, uh, guess who's here? Huh? The blonde. Remember? Gay, gay dawn. Gay? Here? Oh, you think I'm kidding. Gay! Come on, come on, get in here. <laughs> hey, yeah. as pretty as ever. Yeah. Where you been, honey, all the time Johnny was away? Yeah. All around. If I'd have known that, I'd have tried to be Johnny's yeah, toy. the same old Ziggy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, baby, all right. Come on, step aside. Why don't you go over there and fix yourself a drink? A drink? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Well, Ziggy, the uh, stuff's all here in the suitcase. Open up, let's see it. Hey, Lou, Lou, come here. Who's he? Lou, just about the best expert there is on counterfeit dough. Yeah. Take a look, Lou. Yeah, the paper feels good. Lathe works okay. Portrait's good. No breaks in the lines. Serial numbers check out? What do you think, I'm an amateur? That cover's okay, Ziggy. Looks like high-class merchandise. Okay, huh? So far, yeah. Now bring out the engraving. Now, wait a minute. Now, just don't stall, Ziggy, will you? I'm in kind of in a hurry. You don't have much time, Mr. McLeod. They'll be leaving soon. What are you going to do? Not much choice, is there? I'll run the boat for them. Oh, no. No, don't. Don't go with us. They'd, they'd wait till you got inside of Cuba, and then they'd kill you. She's right, Frank. Tell them you'll go. Then when you get outside in the dark, make a break. Run. Try to get away. Yeah, it's your only chance, fella. Out there in the dark, make a break. Run. Uh, that's what my head says. You ain't gonna make a fight of it. I don't know. Not that one Rocco more or less makes any difference. What I said still goes. But it's just They'll that I... kill you. If a man's a fighter, he can't walk away from a fight. That's the answer, I guess. I know how he feels. Well, listen, they're leaving. They made their deal. Yeah. Well, we, we just wait now and see what happens. Hey, yo, McLeod. Come in here. All of you, come in here. Your friends leave? Yeah. Are you coming with a soldier? Yes or no? I'm in a hurry. You win, Mr. Rocco. Yeah, I thought you'd change your mind. Well, Nora, want to come along, sister? Hmm? Want to come along? Where are my things, Johnny? I better get my things. Oh, I uh, forgot to tell you, you're not coming. Johnny! Let go of me, will you? Get no, off me! Please take me with you. You got to, Johnny, you got to. Oh, please, I'll stop drinking. Oh, get out of my way. I'll kill myself, I will. Johnny, please, me... please listen. I'll be good like I was before. I won't let you go without me. You've got to take me with you. You've got to. Johnny, we're wasting time. Uh, get away from me. Now, stay close to the soldier, will you? If he tries anything, let him have it good. Now, so long, old man. Next time you have a hurricane, think of Johnny Rocco. Frank. Goodbye, Frank. Good luck, son. Thanks. Johnny! <laughs> They're on the dock. I can see him. He's starting the motor. Oh, he'll make his break now. He'll run away. He's got a gun now. He'll be able gun? to... Gun? What gun? Yeah, Rocco's. I took Rocco's gun and gave it to him. You? Yeah, why doesn't he run? Run, fella. Run! Why doesn't he run? He's in the boat they're casting off. He had his chance to run. His only chance. And he didn't take it. No answer. The phone's still dead. I'll take the car, Dad. I'll drive to Palm Grove, the Coast Guard station. Yeah. Coast Guard. I'll hurry. I'll be back as soon as I can. How we doing, McLeod? We're on our course or close to it. Just see that you keep us that way. Hey, Toots, how you feeling? Uh, oh, I told you I could never stand a boat. I... I feel awful, all this bouncing up and down. There's a bed down there. Yeah, it's too hot down there. Hey, what time is it? A little after four. Not halfway there yet. Watch McLeod. If he tries anything, shoot. Yeah, yeah, sure. Boy, I must have had a little nap. <clears throat> Everything all right up there, Curly? Yeah. What's the matter with Angel? No, I'm sleeping. He'll take over for Tuts after a while. <laughs> yeah, they've been talking about us on the radio just now. <laughs> they got boats out looking for us. <laughs> Coast Guard. We got too much of a start for them. Yeah, fog like this, they couldn't find a Queen Mary. <laughs> got some cards? Let's kill a little time. 
Hey, you, Toots. What do you want? Now, you try anything and Take I'll... a look over the stern. See if we picked up any kelp. Any what? Seaweed. You can foul up the shaft. You better look. Okay. No. No, I don't see any. Help! Help! What's the matter? What's going on up there? Your friend, he fell overboard. You did it. When you revved the motors just now. Yeah, when you swung the wheel, you made him fall over. Johnny! I got a gun. Stay where you are, Curly. Johnny! Watch it. He's got a gun. Oh, Curly. Curly, what's the matter? Curly! He don't answer. Nobody answers Toots and Curly. Curly! The steps, Johnny. Blood coming down steps. Well, it's him, McLeod, the soldier. Curly killed him. Go on, uh, go up there. Get up there and see. Well, don't you hear me? I'll get killed. You gonna go up there, are you? There's nothing to be afraid of. Curly shot him. He's dead. Then you go, Johnny. You go up. Nobody tells me what to do. Nobody. Johnny. Johnny. Hey, soldier. Soldier, listen to me. I know you're up there. Say something. Curly's dead, huh? Well, I saw his angel. Just me now. Me down here and you up there. From now on, we'll be partners. Everything will be 50-50. I got a hundred grand down here. A hundred grand. Well, what do you say? Can you hear me? What do you say? Yeah, I know what you're thinking. You'll get rid of me and have all the money for yourself. Is that it? Is it? Well, suppose I say the money is yours. Yeah, I'll, I'll toss up the suitcase. I'll throw it up there on deck. There! Now, do you believe me? It's yours. And plenty more when we get to Cuba. Do you hear me? I'll make you rich. Soldier. Soldier. You're not big enough to do this to Rocco. I'll kill you. You'll never bring me here. Never. Now, look. Uh, look, soldier, look. I know what it is. <laughs> yeah, you, you figure that I got Angel's gun, that you can't trust me, right? Okay. I'll throw the gun up there, too. There. There's a gun. The money in my gun. Now, what else have I got? I'm leveling with you, soldier. Okay, you believe me now? Look, I'm... I'm... I'm coming up. I got no gun, and... I'm coming up. Where are you? Dark up here. Get back to the stern, Rocco. Nobody gives me orders. Some wild guy, huh? That was a deputy's gun I threw away. You don't think I... Go ahead, Santana. We lost you. Come in, please. We lost your signal. Come in, please. Over. Sorry. I was calling Coast Guard. This is the Coast Guard. Please identify yourself. Over. My name is Frank McLeod. I'm about 12 miles off Boot Key Harbor on my way in. Over. Are you all right? Are you all right? Over. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. But I'll need medical attention. Over. Continue on course. Stand by on this frequency. I'm standing by. Uh, will you put me through to the Largo Hotel? Stand by, Santana. We'll try to put you through. No sign of them, Ben. No sign of them at all. I checked the Coast Guard ten minutes ago. Nothing yet, Mr. Temple. I, uh, I'll have to take you in, Miss Dawn. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, sure. Take me in. They all get away, huh, Ben? Saw you... Dead, those poor Indians dead. McLeod as good as dead. But Rocco and his gang get away. You get one woman who didn't have anything to do with it. They didn't all get away, Dad. The state police picked up that man they call Ziggy. Yeah. They want all of you to identify him. Mr. Temple, I'm mighty grateful to you for saving my life and all, but those two boys, the Osceolas, well, I... I'd rather been killed than have innocent blood on my hands. I'm the one to blame. If they hadn't trusted me, they, they wouldn't have turned up here. They'd still be alive. Oh, no, Mr. Temple, it wasn't you. It wasn't the law or, or anybody. It was only Johnny Rocco. 
Nobody in the whole world is safe as long as he's alive. We better go, miss. I'll take it, Dad. Hotel Largo. Yes? It's the Coast Guard. Yes? Yes, I'll hold on. Frank! Oh, thank God. Yes. Yes, Frank. Yes, we'll be waiting. Nora. He's all right, Dad. He's coming back to us. The curtain falls on Key Largo, and the spotlight turns to our stars as you meet them in person. Edward G. Robinson, Claire Trevor, and Edmund O'Brien. Claire, it's easy to understand how your performance in Key Largo won you an Academy Award. Well, thank you, Bill. And speaking of awards, Eddie Robinson won a very important one in Europe recently. The famous World Award for Acting, presented to him in Cannes, France. Our congratulations, Eddie. And it's certainly good to have you back after so many well, months abroad. Good to be back, Bill, and learn all the news, such as Edmund O'Brien being the father of the prettiest daughter born in Hollywood this year. Well, what's her name, Edmund? Bridget Eileen. What else could an O'Brien be named? <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, I hope you know there are certain things a daughter should be taught very early, things like the uh, right complexion care. Lux soap has been mine for a long time. Mm. What are they saying about that in Paris these days, Eddie? Well, the uh, same idea, only slightly different words. Le savon luxe et le soin préféré pour mon teint. You know, Lux soap is my favorite complexion care. Well, that's the perfect way to <laughs> express it, Eddie. <laughs> By the way, what was the high spot of your summer in Europe? Well, I think it was the day I spent in the House of Commons in London to listen to a debate between Mr. Churchill and Mr. Bavan. Uh, now, uh, won't you tell us about next week's play, Bill? Next week's play was a smash hit on both stage and screen. It's the paramount success, Dear Ruth. And we'll have the original stars of the picture, Joan Caulfield and William Holden. This is a comedy made to order for family entertainment, so I know you'll all want to join us next Monday night. Oh, it's a delightful play, Bill. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night and come back soon. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen... Winter is the most dangerous time of the year on the highway for those of you who have snow, ice, and fog to contend with. For everyone, there are fewer hours of daylight driving, so extra care on the highway may save your life or another's. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Joan Caulfield and William Holden in Dear Ruth. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Edward G. Robinson will soon be seen in the London Films production My Daughter Joy. Claire Trevor will soon be seen in the Universal International release Borderline, starring with Fred McMurray. Edmund O'Brien will next be seen in the Warner Brothers picture, Backfire. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Louis Silvers. Join us again next Monday night to hear Dear Ruth, starring Joan Caulfield and William Holden. Spry is a new spry, a better than ever spry. You'll be a better cook when you use spry. Spry in your baking pan, spry in your frying pan. You'll be a better cook when you use spry. Talk about glorious cakes. They're better than ever made with new spry. Lighter, finer, richer, supremely delicious. Why? Because new spry contains a superior new cake improver you'll find in no other type of shortening. For better cakes than ever and for all you bake and fry... Try new, better-than-ever Spry, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company. You'll be a better cook when you use Spry. Be sure to listen next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Dear Ruth, starring Joan Caulfield and William Holden. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows over these same stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>